Guys, Mr. Bowman here. We're looking at 2.12 probability methods. In particular, we're going to be focusing on all the merit questions from that 2015 exam. So question number 12 um, from the website was the first question from the 2015 exam. It was a merit one. Um, let's get straight into it. So question number 12. And I have given us a hint about the topic. Um, waiting time for a patient attending a medical center uh, blah 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 is approximately normally distributed so you'll normally see that phrase in a normal distribution question that'll give you a bit of reassurance we've been told about the mean and we've been told about the standard deviation after how many minutes will 90 percent of patients be seen by a doctor um, so when we're starting a normal distribution question does it really matter what level it is it is achieve merit or excellence you should be looking to draw a normal distribution curve and putting in all the information that you know. So we were told that the mean is 34 and we were told that the standard deviation is eight. And that came from the, the first paragraph. We were then told about how many minutes. So that's normally along the X axis and that's the unknown that we're trying to find out. That will be our X. And we're interested in about, when will 90% of the patients be seen? So. What we're going to do is we're going to draw a line here and we're going to put X and I'll explain what I've, why I've done that. So this here would represent the top 10%. So this would be the 10% the of people who had the slowest or the longest wait to see a doctor. Which means everything below that would be the 90% of, 90 of patients that were seen within whatever amount of time that is. And that's what we need to go ahead and find out. So that means the probability of this area would be 0.09. Now that we've got that, we need to think about our calculator. We're using the inverse normal distribution function. And when you're using that, you need to know about the tail. And you can see we're going down the left, which means it will be a left tail. The area will be 0.09. Don't forget that relates to the probability that you're interested in. The standard deviation of 8, nice and easy, and the mean of 34. When you put that all into your calculator, you're going to get 44.252 minutes. So that means 90% of the patients will be seen within about 44 minutes um, of arriving at that medical center. And now looking at question number 13. And question number 13, hint gives it away, two-way tables. The two-way table also gives that away. Um, the question is, we've got a whole bunch of information, we'll break that down. Um, what proportion of candidates took six subjects and passed? So the first thing to note is if you look how that question relates to the table you're given, you've been given pass-fail year 12 or year 13. We do not care about if they are year 12 or year 13. We only care about if they took six subjects or if they passed. So question is actually a bit tricky it's asking you to draw another or a separate two-way table related to the variables that you are looking at so in our case we're going to write six subjects and when you read the question the other one is five subjects so six subjects or five subjects and then up the top if they passed or if they failed so we know a bit of information we know that grand total is going to stay the same there's still 1500 students that hasn't changed and we know the passing and the failing is unchanged. So that there is going to be 1,200 and 300. So we've got what we can from the table. We're now going to jump back to the wordy part to see what else we can populate. Um, so we found out that 682 were taking six subjects. So the this is going to go over here, 682. That gives us enough information to find out how many people are taking five subjects, which is 818. Um, of the candidates taking five subjects, we know 192 of them failed the exam. So that would relate to the five subject people. And we know 192 failed. That is actually enough, even though we've got three blank ones, that's enough to work backwards to find everything else. So we know that this here is 108, which is 300 minus 192. This here is 574, which is 682 minus 108. And then finally, this number here is 626, which is 1,200 minus 574. So we've now got a two-way table exploring 
the, um, the variables that we actually care about from the table. We're now going to get into the probability part of it. So we're trying to find the probability of six subjects and passing. And then for this type of question, two-way tables, we're always going to look over F over T. There is 1,500 students in total. Of those 15, how many took six subjects and passed? That would be the number up here. That's six and passed. That's 574. We then put that into our calculator to find out a decimal. And I'm getting 0 0.3827. And that there had a 4DP rounding. We're now on to question number 14. I've given us a hint. It relates to probability trees here. Um, and basically we've been asked what percentage of calves will eventually be kept into the pedigree herd. Um, and yeah, this was quite a complicated probability tree, so let's break down all this information here. Um, when calves are born into the herd, a decision is made after one month and then after three months as to whether or not they'll be kept or sold. 55% of the calves born are going to be male at one month stage, so they've given us details about the one month and then they've given us details about the three months. So for someone to be kept into the herd, the first thing we need to look at is, well, how many of them, or what proportion is male, what proportion is female? Because that then impacts if they're sold or kept later on. So we have 0 0.55 male and 0 0.45 female. And that all comes from that 55% number there. So once we know if they're male or female, a decision is then made about, is then made about them at that one month stage. So at one month, they are either sold or they are kept. And then the same with the females, they are either sold or they are kept. So at the one month stage, 70% of males are sold. That there is going to be 0 0.7 and 20% of females are sold. We can figure out the rest. So that means 0.3% sorry, 0 0.3 um, are kept and 0 0.8 females are kept. So once they're sold, they've left the herd. So we can't do anything else with those ones. But when they are kept, at the three month mark, there is another decision. So you can see at three months, there's another decision if they're sold or kept. So we're gonna write sold and kept, and then sold and kept. So this is all at the three months. 80% of males are sold. So that there is 0 0.8, which means that there is 0 0.2, and 35% of females are sold. 0 0.355, oh sorry, 0 0.35, and 0 0.65. So that's our messy probability tree. It runs through every scenario based on if they are female or male, kept or sold at the first or third month. We've been asked, what's the probability that they'll be kept in the herd? And that would relate these two branches here where they are kept at the third stage if you are sold beforehand we're not interested in that particular chain so the probability of this outcome would be 0 0.55 times 0 0.3 times 0 0.2 and that relates to the numbers or the probabilities along the branches on the way and the next one is going to be 0 0.45 times 0 0.8 times 0 0.65 so 0 0.45 times 0 0.8 times 0.65. That first probability, if you put that all into your calculator, you're going to get a small probability of 0 0.33. So 0 0.033. And then down the bottom, females more likely to be kept with a probability of 0 0.234. We then need to add them up. So the probability that they will be kept after three months is going to be equal to those two numbers added together, 0 0.033 plus 0 0.234, and that's going to get us to 0. Point, oh gosh, no zero there, 267. Um, at this stage here, you're probably going to get your merit mark. I just want to note, it specifically has asked for a percentage, so let's convert that 26.7%. So that was the last merit question from the 2015 exam. Hopefully you found them useful. Keep practicing. Make sure you have a look at some excellent questions as well.